In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I defeated the hardest content in Dragonair Silent Gods. Welcome to the channel, everyone. I'm Scratch, and of course, the hardest content in Dragonair Silent Gods was the Fey Man, that you have 180 floors to defeat, and there are a lot of challenging opponents in there. Now, I just quickly wanna mention this is not a free to play video. Because honestly, I don't think that as free to play from season one or even playing two seasons, I don't think that you will be able to defeat this game mode unless you are extremely lucky with your summons. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some of you guys managed to defeat it with some very free to play friendly teams. Let me know in the comments down below because I'm very curious to, to know it as well. I've used quite a few legendaries on the, on the higher stages. This is a very time consuming game mode and honestly, it's fairly rewarding at the same time. For whoever plays Rage Shadow Legends and is kind of like an OG player, I just kind of like want to give you an insight. This game mode felt to me like Faction Wars felt in Raid when they got released and they were very challenging. It pissed me off so much, but I enjoyed it at the same time, basically, because it was very grindy, it was very challenging. I had stages that I probably had to retry for an entire hour, maybe, you know, of course, doing changes, adjusting things on the champions, not constantly just click replay, but was pretty time consuming, frustrating, and I enjoyed it because it was grindy and was a challenge. So you felt an accomplishment when you managed to, to be the stage, you know, and I haven't recorded specific stages, guys. I haven't went in and... uh to do guides on stage 161, stage 141, etc. Because most of the people, if you ask them, they say, well, stage 141 and stage 147 were really hard. But they're not telling you that every second stage will be very hard, you know? It's not something that you're just gonna cruise through instantly once you beat those two stages. You're gonna find a new block at every second stage, more or less. And at every second stage, you're gonna have to change something positioning on the board you see i'm always moving characters around the main thing is i have stun sets on some of them and i want to make sure that the champions with stun sets they hit the enemy that's the most annoying for me the enemy that could cause me the biggest problems so because of it i'm always moving them around so the team that i'm running right here against this stage i think this was stage 176 or something like that or maybe we already passed that and we moved to a different one I'm running unkillable here. Zephy, I'm timing everything perfectly. I had to put the speed down. A lot of times, you see, I don't have the shield up right here. A lot of times I had to stop the run, go do a few runs in the goblin to fill up my shield because that one shield can make a massive difference. So just go back and forward, get your shield done if you're uh, in, a, in a desperate need of uh, something to help you and keep, your, keep your, your team alive. But right here, I'm timing everything. From the moment when my Tamar or uh, Lolita or whatever, uh, whatever champions I was using lands the stun on the enemies. I'm checking their ultimate energy to see when they're using the ultimate. I'm waiting for the stun to disappear. Then with Zephy, I'm putting the unkillable on. The enemies will use the, the skills. They will damage my team badly. And then with Garius, as soon as they're done with their ultimates, I'm healing them back. So I have 8 seconds to do all this, okay? That's how much I have. And then rinse and repeat. A lot of them, they need to have a bit of a, a bit of a manual in. A lot of times they have jumpers. The most annoying stages are the one with Questa, the ones with Trollgar, the ones with uh, Sagomir. And the problem is that you don't only have one Sagomir or one Questa. It's when you have double Questa, two or three Sagomirs and Mitrasi reviving them constantly. And... They're annoying, especially the ones with Mitrasi, because you can't just go in with tanky teams and just slowly kill them, because she heals, she revives, and you're never gonna end that fight. And honestly, I have some very interesting teams that I used against that, and my main team was Radiance. The reason why I kind of like focused on Radiance, of course, I have Huberg, I have Laurentil, which are amazing. Radiance deals a lot of damage. And because, you see, I perfectly stunned that Trollgar there. I wanted to stun him. That's why I moved my uh, my Tamar on the other side. So he gets stunned and doesn't get to kill my Laurentil before he buffs to, to deal damage and before I get to buff with Zephy to keep them uh, keep them uh, alive, basically. You know, So all this is very, very important. You got to pay attention to all these uh, small details. And a lot of the times you got to move on a, on a 1x speed, honestly. You see? 
he killed my uh, my lord until I'm still going to try and see if I can uh, rag them like this. Vorash, double Vorash, triple Vorash on some stages. So annoying. They just one shot you. It doesn't matter what you have in there. You get one shot, man. Okay, is if you cannot constantly control them. So another good recipe against this is to have a lot of uh, champions that cover most of the area on stun sets and just constantly time them to control the enemy on and on and on so they never get to use their skills. But that's pretty hard. I had some teams like that as well. This is kind of like a recording from uh, some of the last stages where I kind of like went in and out. I had to retry some of them. I had to, to make sure I'm kind of like... Uh, getting the the things that i need so right here i'm at the last stage seems like i'm directly at the at the boss and even here so i had to go and farm goblin to go and fill up my shield for this boss and the team that i use here on the last boss adolphus thorbart erich tonnelnan and i use reita to cleanse you know vika could work instead of uh instead of reita of course reita will give me uh decrease attack as well and a bit of damage reduction the main thing is you gotta time the decrease attack as well if you're using a vikuk vikuk will give you decrease attack too and will give you a bit of extra healing but you want to make sure you have that shield that shield is so important you're not going to be able to constantly cleanse the boss will get so many stacks i tried the team with sigrid and just slower uh slower variations the problem is the boss gets so many stacks that he just kills everybody you know and I had to bring in my Vortex team, basically, just to take the boss down faster with Tonnelnan and Erich, just dropping a lot of uh, a lot of damage. They're doing a, an amazing, amazing job at it. And the final reward that you're getting, guys, is not necessarily amazing. You are getting a legendary artifact, which probably is not very useful for PvE content. I'll be honest, it's not useful for PvE content. I don't think so. I, I can't imagine using that anywhere, you know? You're getting one Helialite dice. But it's the accomplishment, you know, and I feel like was was an enjoyable content. Frustrating, but enjoyable at the same time. And I will use probably that uh, artifact in Arena. So we had the content creator, uh, content creator uh, tournament. I used the legendary artifact, the turtle uh, back or whatever you're calling it from here. I used it quite, quite a bit, you know, quite a bit. But enough, enough with all the talking. Let me just quickly show you what teams I had. Uh, in uh in here basically so i'm quickly gonna head over to any of the dungeons just to show you i use quite a few different variations for uh, for most of them so i'm gonna start with the very classic team that i had initially and uh, that will be the one from here dane sigrid frobart hexandra and adolphus this actually took me in for quite quite a quite a bit it was a pretty good team and this is kind of like what i had in terms of builds on them let me just get rid of the the dots. So I haven't went just full ham on a uh, on my uh, on my secret either, guys. I gave her some accuracy to land the decrease attack to land the heal reduction was very very important against some of the some of the stages to have the heal reduction. So that's kind of like what I had on my uh, heroes. If you don't have the legendary artifact, it's fine. Just use whatever epics you have that might benefit your team. You know, don't think that these legendary artifacts changed everything for me in there because they didn't you know they did help me on the on the uh high stages you know but for this team they didn't really do that much honestly the next team that i had in was the necrosis team and this was more tanky i don't even have a tank in here my tank here was vinyara okay so i had vinyara built as a tank with accuracy and resistance and everybody was targeting her now i used to manual most of the stages with this because i used to target with vinyara's ultimate the one champion that was creating issues, stealing all the ultimate energy, putting frozen, decrease attack on it, after move to the next one, to the next one, and control them like this. Then I had a lot of healing. Stun set on a Voresh, skill haste on Gulende to heal, decrease attack, a bit of more control. A stun set could work great on Gulende as well, but her cooldown is pretty long. Then of course Magan, MVP when we're talking about healing, and we had him uh, to shield the uh, to shield our team. I actually even forgot his name, I'll be honest. I even forgot his name. Gladros. But either way, they did an amazing job on some stages, and mainly on stages where it was hard for me to keep my team alive. True, I haven't... Uh, I've, I was not using Zephy at that, at that point, so uh, 
once I got Zephy in, I wasn't really using this team. I think I used it against one after, like, in between floor 150 and 160. Then the main theme was this one right here. Radiance Farm, how you may see, we had uh, Lolita, Alton, Huberg, Laurent Hill, and Garius. These they used to rack, okay, because I had, I had so much firepower from the Radiance team. But this only kind of, like, worked all the way up to, like, floor 100... Uh, 140 I would say around there you know after that I had to kind of like make adjustments so the very first thing that I've done was to remove Alton and bring in Tamar okay so this was the next team that I was running and this worked very good for quite a while when I was getting blocked mainly was because I was not able to keep my champions alive okay so the next thing that I was doing was to remove uh, Lolita from here and instead of that I brought in Zephy. Now, I had to slowly adjust the builds on them. I had to give them resistance. Resistance on Garius. Uh, resistance on Zephy. Resistance on uh, Tamar. 300 resistance to be more specific. That's kind of like what you want to ensure that they're not constantly getting crowd control. And that was very, very helpful. Absolutely insane on some of the stages where they were getting controlled by uh, uh, different heroes, you know. So... That played actually a very important role. After, I had kind of like the, the last team that I made. And this was against Sagomirs and against Mitrasi. Okay, they are so annoying. I was just not able to kill them with this team. Because they were constantly pinching one of my champions down. Three Sagomirs gangbanging your team. Okay, think about it like this. It was just mental. It was so annoying. That was the most frustrating ever. So, what I had to do, I had to bring in Shagrel. Yes, funny enough, Shagrel did the job. And I removed Laurent Hill as well. I had more crowd control. So, Tamar and uh, uh, Lolita were doing a lot of stuns, you know. Uh, they actually did an amazing work. I still had Zephy to put, uh, to put unkillable. My Zephy was not scrolled for almost the entire duration of this. And... Uh, yeah, Shagrel was targeting Mitrasi directly, killing her first, and then moving to the rest. So this was a pretty long fight. I've tried it with many different ones that I had available. But honestly, nothing worked better than this team. These are all the teams that I used to defeat the hardest content in Dragonair Silent Gods, the Fame Mander guys. And honestly, they are different options. If you have different champions available from different elements, I'm convinced that there are plenty uh, plenty of different options. I will show you one champion though if you have him. So if you have Ogok by any chance, you can pretty much do the same thing that I've done with my Zephy. Okay, so Ogok can put invincibility on your team as well. In the exact same way my uh, my Zephy was doing it, you know. The only thing is this is for 5 seconds. Zephy I think is for 8 if I'm not mistaken. But either way, you're gonna have to time it just a bit better and do a poison fire team, you know, and that might help you. But I feel like if you don't have a lot of inspired heroes and things like this, it will be a challenge and you need to kind of like make the most out of it. Utilize everything to your advantage, everything that you have available. And uh, yeah, just just enjoy the grind if you're a if you're a hardcore, a hardcore player. But if you guys had any free to play teams whatsoever, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to share them with other people so they know as well. So more people will be able to defeat this content. As usual, appreciate every single one of you guys watching. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to smash a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all soon in the next video. Peace.